Well, it's my joy to be coming to you today with the Heart of a Shepherd devotion. I apologize for being out of touch the last couple of days, but as you know, I've been traveling, helping my mom and dad in North Carolina, and so I'm uh, catching up, and I hope that you have been patient with me. Our scripture reading today is Ruth chapter 3 and chapter 4, and I've titled this devotional, Amazing Grace, Here Comes the Bride. Now, we're continuing our brief study of the Boaz and Ruth love story and uh, are reminded of the circumstances that providentially brought Ruth, a Moabite widow, to Bethlehem of Judah. Now, Naomi, Ruth's widowed mother-in-law, had left Bethlehem during a time of famine. And 10 years later, she returned from Moab as a widow and childless. Her sojourn to Moab had proved bitter she said in chapter 1 and verse 21, I went out full and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Well, only the Moabitess named Ruth was with her and she was also a widow. Now, from an earthly perspective, life had dealt some significant harsh blows against Naomi and Ruth. While there are many details I could cite to justify that observation, suffice it to say that both women faced a sense of destitution and a loss that left them without a provider. Now, when Ruth entered Bethlehem, she was a young widow, a stranger in Israel, far from her family and country, which was Moab. Now, she was also, though, the daughter-in-law of a widow, Naomi, who was embittered by her sorrows. Now, by the way, according to some Jewish historical records, Ruth is believed to have been the granddaughter of Eglon, the king of Moab. And she could have, obviously, returned to her royal life. But instead, she chose the Lord and to be with her mother-in-law, Naomi. Now, remember, Ruth was an outsider and depended upon the charity of those who were not her countrymen. And yet, though she was far from home, she was never far from the providence of the Lord, whom she confessed in chapter 1 and verse 16 and 17 as her God. And so in a testimony of the Lord's sovereignty, Ruth found herself gleaning grain in the fields of Boaz, whom the scriptures describe in chapter 2 and verse 21 and 23 as a mighty, wealthy man who was the kinsman of Naomi, her mother-in-law. Now that brings us to Ruth chapter 3, and I invite you to open your Bible. And in the first five verses of chapter 3, you're going to see what I have subtitled, Naomi the Matchmaker. Well, since in the providence of God at work in her, her and Ruth's life, Naomi had declared she would not rest until she knew it would be well with her widowed daughter-in-law, chapter 3 and verse 1. Naomi then revealed to Ruth that Boaz was their kindred, this wealthy, powerful man who lived in Bethlehem. She knew he would not go home while the grain was being winnowed, or that is called out of its outer shell, and would sleep on the threshing floor. Why? To secure his harvest, that nobody else might steal it. And so Naomi instructed Ruth to bathe, put on a fresh robe, make her way to the threshing floor of Boaz, where she was to lie down at the feet of Boaz in the night and unnoticed. Now notice then chapter uh, 3 again of the book of Ruth, verses 6 through 18. And here I would describe for you Ruth's adherence to Naomi's instructions and Boaz's honorable response. Well, Ruth agreed to Naomi's instruction and did exactly as she was told. When Boaz aroused from his sleep at midnight, he discovered a woman was sleeping at his feet, and that woman was Ruth. Well, when she declared she was her near kinsman, or he was her near kinsman, she, Ruth, had in essence made a plea to be his wife in that culture. Well, in verse 10, Boaz praised Ruth's godly character, and he pledged he would honor his role as her kinsman. However, there was one man that was closer than himself that must disavow his right to be Ruth's husband, Redeemer. Now look at chapter 4 of the book of Ruth, and here we have what I would describe as from bitterness to joy. Now Boaz's discharge of his obligations we find in the first eight verses of chapter 4. 
Boaz, we read, set out early the following day, and he sat in the gate of the city, where he met the man who was, and I'm going to quote, the nearer kinsman of Ruth, therefore had the greater right to marry her, should he choose. Well, with ten elders of the city as witnesses, Boaz offered to the nearer kinsman the right to purchase Naomi's land, but with that, a reminder that the responsibility of taking Ruth as his wife would be upon him. Well, confessing it would complicate his own inheritance, meaning his will, that older, nearer kinsman deferred his right to redeem the land, and he said in chapter 4 and verse 6, Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now notice then verses 9 through 12, where we have the witnesses to his proposal. Well, with ten witnesses observing, the nearer kinsman surrendered his right of ownership, taking off his sandal, as was the custom, handing it to Boaz in a symbolic act of transferring ownership or the right of the land, therefore the right to marry Ruth. He gave that sandal to Boaz. Boaz then acknowledged his obligation to redeem, that is, purchase the land from Naomi, his kinswoman, thereby redeeming Ruth as his wife. Now, all who witnessed Boaz's pledge blessed his union with Ruth. They prayed that she would bear sons to him, as had Rachel and Leah, the wives and mothers of Jacob's sons. Now, notice verses 13 through 17. For here we have God's blessings on Boaz and Ruth's union. Boaz, then we read in verse 13, took Ruth. She became his wife, and he went in unto her, and she bare a son. Now Naomi's shroud of bitterness was suddenly lifted, and the people of Bethlehem rejoiced with her in verse 14. They praised Ruth the Moabites, though an outsider, for she had been better to Naomi than had she given birth to, verse 15, seven sons. Here's a closing thought for you today, and it is this. The son born to Ruth and Boaz would be named Obed. He would be Jesse's father, therefore King David's grandfather. David would become the king of Israel from whose lineage Jesus Christ would come. Also, Ruth the Moabitess became the great-grandmother of David, Israel's beloved king. And by the way, in Matthew chapter 1, her name, Ruth, is listed in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Well, as a testimony of God's grace, the romance of Ruth and Boaz would culminate in the birth of Jesus Christ. What an amazing story of romance, grace, and redemption. I conclude with this. What a great God you and I serve. He is sovereign, providentially working all things together for our good and for His glory. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of Heart of a Shepherd. Bye-bye.